I can't believe it. In the early 1900s, paleontologists excavating in Egypt's Fayyum depression unearthed a fossil that baffled them. The fossil belonged to a beast that looked like a rhinoceros, walked like an elephant, and spent half its life in the water like a hippo, yet was related to none of them. This wasn't a science fiction mashup, it was a real creature named Arsinoetherium, and its story will challenge everything you thought you knew about ancient megafauna. Unearthed by British geologist H.L. Beadnell in 1901, this fossil puzzle was given a name by 1902 that echoed both Egypt's royal history and its scientific intrigue, Arsinoetherium, the beast of Arsinoe. The name honored Queen Arsinoe the Cool, while the species name recognized a German paleontologist, Carl Alfred Ritter von Zittel, who was central in early Egyptian paleontology. While the Royal Association emphasized its importance, the skull itself still left researchers confused about what kind of creature they were actually dealing with. Fossils from the Fayum created a strange picture because they didn't only preserve Arsinoetherium, they also included monkeys, early whales, primitive elephants, and countless other mammals, a mixture so unusual it was ripe for mistaken conclusions. When jaws and skulls began emerging from the ground, the impressive forward projecting horns suggested to many that it must belong with rhinoceroses. Its sheer bulk seemed to push the argument further. At over three meters long and close to two and a half tons in weight, it rivaled modern rhinos in scale, while its broad skeleton and massive weight-bearing legs hinted at an elephant-like build. Was it closer to rhinos or elephants? For decades, this kept paleontologists arguing. The confusion was understandable because Arsenotherium didn't fit existing categories neatly. Its horns seemed to point one way, its skeleton another, and the swampy environment it once inhabited added another layer of complexity. Early paleo artists often drew it like a spiked rhinoceros, and once those images found their way into textbooks, the association stuck in public imagination. But as more remains were studied through the 20th century, a clearer image began to emerge. Detailed scrutiny of its teeth, skeletal structure, and comparisons with related fossils suggested it wasn't a rhinoceros at all. Eventually, Arsenotherium was placed in Embrithopoda, an extinct order within the larger Afrotherian group Payetnungalata. That means its closest living relatives are not grazing rhinos, but elephants, manatees, and the small rodent-like hyrax. This family tree is one of the most surprising twists, showing just how much appearances can mislead. The very horns that made it seem so rhino-like were the features that led us most astray, and those horns deserve a much closer look next. Two giant horns jutting forward from the snout make Arsinoetherium look like an animal built for aggression, but the closer paleontologists studied the fossils, the more unusual the story became. Alongside the dominant pair sat a smaller set of bumps high above the eyes, giving the skull its unique double-horned profile. When the first reconstructions appeared in the early 20th century, they showed a beast imagined as a thick-skinned juggernaut, charging head down like a rhinoceros and skewering anything in its path. The design seemed to announce brute combat as its defining strategy, yet the anatomy left too many inconsistencies for that simple picture to hold. Close examination of horn cross sections revealed they were not heavy, solid supports like one might expect from a high-impact weapon. Instead, the foundations of the horns were hollow bony cores laced with grooves and vascular channels that once carried blood to living tissue around them. This changed the interpretation entirely. Rhino horns, for comparison, are sheaths of pure keratin compacted into solid masses. The horns of antelopes and cattle, on the other hand, consist of dense bony cores wrapped in keratin, making them durable enough to withstand repeated clashes. Arsinoetherium fell somewhere in between. Its cores were closer to the bovid type, but with a lighter internal structure that pointed away from violent ramming. That difference guides how scientists picture its behavior. Rather than sprinting headlong, at arrival a male would have faced off in slow struggles, pressing forehead to forehead, horns locked in a test of endurance. The lighter structure explained why it could not afford bone-shattering impacts, but the keratin sheath strengthened the external profile. Surface grooves in preserved fossils line up with where this sheath would have attached, and the rugosity at the horn bases suggests a thick textured covering. With the keratin grown over those cores, the animal's face would have looked even more dramatic than the bare bone suggests. 
The dimensions varied with age. Juveniles carried shorter stubs while adults grew horns over two and a half feet long, widening and sharpening with maturity. That alone hints at a social function, bigger horns signaling dominance or readiness to compete for mates. Features of the skull support this interpretation as well. The junction between skull and neck was reinforced and the architecture of the occipital region tells us powerful muscles controlled head swings. These adaptations made ritualized shoving or lifting maneuvers possible without breaking the horns themselves. Taken together, the data point to a facade of menace that was more show than weapon. The horns likely worked as displays of strength and status, an evolutionary bluff that gave the animal a prehistoric crown. And as impressive as they were on land, imagining those structures rising above the waterline leads naturally into the question of how the creature spent its time in Egypt's vanished swamps. Picture an enormous animal standing at the edge of a river channel, its body half hidden beneath murky water. Only its nostrils and those strange twin horns rose up like periscopes, betraying its presence among the reeds. This was not some muted shadow slipping quietly by. It was a three-ton bulk with the build of a barrel balanced on four thick pillar-like legs. Its skeleton shows adaptations for slow, but powerful movements in soft ground with four limbs that pulled backwards strongly, the sort of motion that helps an animal push itself through sticky mud or shallow water rather than sprint across dry plains. The resemblance to modern hippos is obvious at first glance, and that's how many early paleontologists pictured it, a massive amphibious grazer spending most of its life submerged. But the story isn't quite that simple. Studies of its teeth and isotopes preserved in the fossil enamel indicate that Arsinoetherium actually split its time between water and land. It may have cooled and sheltered itself in the water during hot parts of the day, but the signatures left in the fossil record suggest it browsed frequently on dry ground as well. That mix of lifestyles complicates the usual comparisons and shows it wasn't locked into the same routine as any living species. The diet it pursued reflects that flexibility. Its jaws carried specialized teeth for cropping soft, leafy vegetation. Instead of chewing through abrasive grasses the way later ungulates did it, it sought fruits, aquatic plants, and tender shoots along the swamp margins. In the humid forests of the Fayum, food like this was abundant. You can picture it gathering along riverbanks, pulling branches within reach, or stripping vegetation submerged in shallow pools. Unlike hippos, which march out to graze on low grasses at night, this animal behaved more like a selective browser, lifting its heavy head to pluck food from a higher level of the forest undergrowth. The backdrop for this life was extraordinary. The Fayum region 30 million years ago was not a desert, but a fertile arc of mangroves, braided rivers and tropical forests. Monkeys leapt in the treetops, early whales cruised nearby waters. Crocodiles patrolled the margins and through it all loomed Arsinoetherium, steady and unmoved by the smaller commotion around it. Speed was not its strength. Instead, its mass and stability made it secure against predators. Remaining near water also reduced the strain of carrying so much weight in the heat, giving it the ability to monopolize patches of vegetation year after year. In this role, Arsenotherium became a dominant herbivore of its ecosystem, not by quick movements or sharp defenses, but by persistence. And while this picture seems vivid today, reconstructions of how it lived have changed many times, leading to a long string of controversies in its scientific story. For decades, the image of Arsenotherium that circulated through museums and textbooks was of a hulking rhino-like monster. Its forward horns were imagined as brutal weapons, and artists routinely portrayed it charging across ancient swamps like a living battering ram. This version of the animal was built on early assumptions when paleontologists only had a few incomplete skulls and little context. The horns looked impressive, the body seemed heavy, so the conclusion felt obvious this was a prehistoric gladiator designed for violent clashes. Even the skeleton cast displayed in the British Museum of Natural History reinforced this view, placing the horns front and center as instruments of war and giving generations of visitors the impression of a colossal armored beast. As more material began to surface, however, that narrative cracked. Detailed studies revealed that the horns were hollow bony cores, not solid structures capable of withstanding crushing impacts. Their architecture made them poor tools for high-speed collisions. 
At the same time, the rest of the skeleton didn't match a running, combat-oriented animal either. Its hips were broad and elephant-like, its legs were straight and columnar, built for stability rather than speed. Together, this anatomy told a different story, one of a slow herbivore adapted to swamp margins or shallow waters rather than aggressive battles on open plains. The discovery directly contradicted the fierce predator-proof image that early artists had cemented. These revisions created tension between scientific findings and popular imagination. Once a creature is branded in the public mind with a singular image, it is difficult to replace. For decades, illustrations continued to exaggerate its brutality long after researchers had shifted away from that interpretation. The story of Arsinoetherium thus became a case study in how initial scientific missteps magnified through art and museum displays can mislead generations of audiences. And yet the image did evolve when new data forced it to. Mid-century reconstructions pushed it toward a more hippo-like life lounging in swamps, while the most recent depictions have leaned into its elephant relatives showing an animal that looks less like a rhino and more like a swamp-dwelling giant with unexpected family ties. Even today, disagreements remain particularly concerning how aquatic it really was. Some scientists suggest it spent much of its life in water, while others interpret the evidence as pointing to a mainly terrestrial browser that only relied on rivers for relief from heat. Modern reconstructions highlight keratin sheaths covering the horns vegetation stripped from tangled undergrowth and swamp environments filled with companions from the Afrotherian lineage. Each shift represents science refining its view, emphasizing that fossils are not finished stories, but clues open to revision. And yet, no matter how much these reconstructions improve, they cannot rewrite the abrupt end that awaited this misunderstood giant. A creature so massive and so specialized might seem untouchable, but time and climate forced a different ending. Around 27 million years ago, Earth entered a cooler and drier phase that reshaped vast regions of Africa. What had once been a world of moist forests, swampy riverbanks and mangrove lagoons shifted into open grasslands. For Arsinoetherium, this was nothing short of a catastrophe. The lush riverside plants it depended on began to decline, replaced with tougher grasses that spread quickly across the land. These early grasslands were not friendly to a leaf-eating browser. They demanded teeth capable of grinding abrasive blades packed with silica and jaws built for long chewing. Arsinoetherium had neither. The structure of its teeth was perfect for cutting through soft leaves, aquatic shoots and tender shrubs. But when faced with the abrasive texture of grasses, those teeth wore down far too quickly. Its jaw was not suited to the repetitive grinding motions needed to process such food. The very features that made it efficient in its swamp world acted against it in the changing landscape. Its massive body, ideal for stability in flooded terrain, became a burden in the more open, drier environments. It no longer had cool water to retreat into, and its heavy build offered little help in ranges where speed and mobility meant survival. This is where the contrast to elephants becomes clear. Elephants share ancestry within the Afrotherian group, but when environments change, they adapted by broadening their diet and moving across vast new ranges. Their versatile teeth allowed them to process grasses as well as woody plants. Arsinoetherium, by contrast, had locked itself into a narrow niche. Its enormous horns, its thick legs, its semi-aquatic habitat all worked in swamps, but collapsed against the demands of open plains. Unlike the adaptable elephants, its world narrowed until there was simply nowhere left for it to live. That is the danger of over-specialization in evolution. A body finely tuned to one environment creates efficiency, but it also creates dependency. When that environment shifts, there is no backup plan. The extinction of Arsinoetherium demonstrates how even the most imposing forms can crumble in the face of change. Strength, size, and intimidation did not matter. Evolution is not about who looks strongest, it is about who can adjust. Its fossils now do more than preserve bones. They show how convergent evolution can create illusions. Arsinoetherium looked like a rhino, but its place on the tree of life lies with elephants, manatees, and tiny hyraxes. That illusion lured researchers astray for decades and reminds us that nature often repeats patterns in unexpected branches. Its skeleton tells the story of nature's inventiveness, but also its cruelty. 
The legacy of Arsenotherium is not survival, but a warning written in bone. Arsinoetherium stands out as a paradox. It carried the horns of a rhinoceros, had the bulk and partly aquatic habits of a hippopotamus, yet its true relatives are elephants, sea cows, and hyraxes. Its life shows how convergent evolution can trick the eye, creating animals that look alike, but are built from completely different lineages. What seemed at first like one of nature's juggernauts was instead a fragile experiment tied too closely to its swampy home and soft leaf diet. When that world vanished, so did it. Which other strange prehistoric creatures would you like to see covered next 